You're sensitive when it comes to cutting length off the top though, but are you ready to take that length off? Yeah, it's for, it's for the channel. Let's do are it. you just saying that because we're on camera or are you actually okay? No, I can send. You can cut it off. Okay. <laughs> Hey, I'm Andy, this is Ryan. We're at Born Free Barber Collective in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and I'm going to be cutting his mullet, cutting it down, and giving it some shape. Andy and I have been uh, kind of working on this mullet for a little while now. We've been growing it out since November, so it's been about four to five months, and I think uh, it's getting a little bushy back there, and just want to take some weight out and also shorten the front of the cut, try to get some volume and balance out the length in the back. My goal is to kind of bring it up, um, like right above his eyebrows. Does that sound about right to you? Yeah. Right? That's not too short. But we're still going to be pushing it back. You know, a typical mullet is super short in the front and long in the back. And you kind of push it forward and have it in the front. Um, but, you know, we're going to give him more of like an like a individual stylized mullet. You know, we can make the top shorter and more of a uniform length when mm -hmm. we push it back. And then that will allow me to really take a lot of length off here. And I'm gonna thin it out, but I'm gonna avoid thinning it out too much because you do have that really fun wave. Mm -hmm. And with wavy and curly hair, you know, if you just take the thinning shears and like thin it out like crazy, it's gonna get really frizzy. Yeah. Um, so we're gonna avoid doing that, but we're gonna make it shorter and, and take some weight out. Great. So I'm gonna start with a two. And I really don't wanna go any higher than, you know, right above his temple. And I can blend that in with clipper over comb later and eventually some scissors. So I'm just going to take this. And with the pandemic, you know, we're wearing masks um, in PA. You have to wear a mask when you're in the barbershop. Um, but I've gotten pretty good, you know, at holding it with my fingers and it can get pretty tricky. Um, but I just kind of like hold it with my thumb and then press his ear down. And with the two, don't go too high and kind of scoop it out because we're going to be leaving this length here long so I can blend it in to the top. And then I want to follow this kind of curve of his head. And again, we don't want to cut into here too much because we like those long pieces. And this is just creating like a clean working space so we can fade it down to the skin. Again, leaving those alone. And we're going to fade that in with some scissors a little bit later. So now I'm going to take one and a half and I'm slowly just going to start fading down. So I'm not going to take the one and a half as high as I took the two, but it's going to be one and a half close and just follow that same line that I made initially. And then you're going to open it all the way which is essentially a two. And you're just going to blend that into that two that you did. You know, it doesn't look like there's that much of a difference from what I did, but you're just setting yourself up to make that fade a lot easier and a lot smoother to kind of work around. And I like to go two to one and a half and then to skin so I can make that line with the skin that I'm eventually going to fade in, but I can make this kind of as clean and as short as possible without losing my place. And I'm not gonna go very high. I'm really just gonna, again, follow. So you see that this line here is pretty like uh, symmetrical with this line here. It's in line with it. I'm just gonna do that on the other side too. Again, not going very high, not going too high. I'm just going to kind of scoop these hairs out and not going as high as that zero I had on the clipper because you don't want to keep bringing the line farther and farther up. You're really trying to blend this length into what you just did and not make it higher or shorter. So that should be short enough now for the, the foil shaver to catch. And sometimes if there's like a little, like you just saw what I did there, there's a little hair that, you know, you need to get. So you can just use the corner of this, kind of just like flick it out of there. 
And instead of using my comb, I'm going to use a bristle brush. Uh, I just want to get all of the little tiny pieces of hair that's going to come off of this. And the pieces of hair that come off with the foil shaver are kind of just like dust, so this is helpful. And with foil shavers, you want to apply a good amount of pressure. And you can kind of flick up with these like you do with the clippers. And that just means you're applying less pressure as you push up. So you can fade it in rather than like really getting in there and then creating a line that's difficult to blend out. And then what I like to do, you know, just to kind of make sure that's blended in is I'll take it and I'll go down with it. It'll still take a little bit off, but it'll just, it'll not create that, that harsh line. You know, this is the shortest, uh, triple zero on the, the clipper. And then we left off with a one and a half right here. So all the way open, make another line. Flick up so you're not creating just a harsh line because we want this to be kind of a seamless fade here, obviously. You can use those corners still to kind of get around the ear so you're not cutting into the fade. And now close it halfway. You see that little one right there? We're going to be blending that in. Don't go as high up as you did with the clipper all the way open, or else you're just going to be bringing the fade higher and higher, and eventually you're going to be all the way up here, and that's not what we want. So I'm going to grab my one guard, pop it on, and I'm going to open it all the way. And that's essentially one and a half, which is what this is. So I'm using the same length just to make sure we don't go up too high. And I think I sound like a broken record saying that, but this essentially is a low taper, a low fade. And that's, it, it can be pretty difficult because it's like you, you have to keep it low the whole time. So that's why I'm, I'm cautious and I keep using the same number over again, but just with different guards. Now I'm gonna close that so it's a full one and just get those long hairs in there that are making that fade not seamless. I really need to expand my vocabulary when I talk about things. <laughs> I just say the same words over and over again. So this is open. I just wanna get some of these long hairs here without cutting too much into this area that we wanna leave long. And we're going to be blending that in with scissors. It's a little, there's a little too much right there, but I want to get that with my scissors. Um, Say again, I don't want to bring it too high. But right now, I kind of want to clean up that line on his head. There's like these hairs, just like don't belong. Okay. So again, I'm just kind of pushing these back and seeing which hairs don't really belong. All I'm doing is cleaning up his hairline. I'm not necessarily giving him a shape up or messing with his hairline. I just want to get these hairs that are just a little too long and create that nice shape. Super simple. So I'll take my comb and push it up and hold it up. Just kind of get that hairs that don't belong. Be really careful here. Kind of go around and do that. And it's really only the hairs that will be sticking out when this is down. So you don't need to go too high. And you prefer doing like the scissor work on the sides with wet hair? Yeah. Yeah, you know, you have a little bit more control that way, especially like in the smaller areas. Um, I mean, it can be done dry too, but I like to do it wet. I'm so afraid now when I walk around with my scissors. Did you guys see that video of that barber that stabbed himself <laughs> in the heart with the scissors? No way. In the barbershop? <gasps> if he's watching this right now, I hope you're okay. I think he's okay, but it's terrifying. Anyways, back to your hair. So... You see these long lengths here. We just kind of want to get that even with everything else. So I'm going to take my comb, pull it out.
just follow those, those guidelines that you gave yourself with the clipper. Um, we're not going to cut much length off the back because that's like the best part of this hairstyle is the length in the back. But we do kind of want it to be as straight as possible. So take it from your fingers, pull it down. I like to rest my scissors on my finger just to create a lot more stability. And again, we want to wet it. And this isn't my favorite spray bottle, so I'm sorry if it kind of, it's like a super soaker. Was that sorry to me? Yes. Okay, it's okay. <laughs> Is it weird to hear all the things come out of my mouth that are usually in my head when I'm cutting your hair? A little bit, but it's we, a lot. We, I mean, you can get talkative during your cut sometimes. Yeah. But These are all the things that go through my head though while I'm cutting your hair. Yeah. You get pretty focused during your haircuts when there's uh, no cameras. Because I like doing it. Yeah, I know. I like it. That's why we like you. <laughs> oh, thanks. All right. So, <laughs> so we're going to section off this front piece. And that's going to be our guideline all the way back. Um, so take about an inch section. So cute. <laughs> what would you call this haircut? The baby emoji. The baby. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to take about an inch off. And I'm just going to cut straight across. I'm going to add in some texture later. But I just want to make sure it's nice and even right now. But you can already see that that's a lot shorter. So that's going to be our guideline. Take that section, pull it up. Wow, we did leave it really long on yeah, top last time, we did. didn't we? We basically didn't take any out. So you can see that line you just made. I know the mullet it can be a little, uh, you know, out there, or goofy to some people. And uh, yeah, I admit some of it is like a little bit of my youthful rebellion trying to do something new. I would be lying if I said I don't like reactions, whether negative or positive. So. When people's eyes widen when I turn to the side, it's kind of, it's funny to me, you know? When you turn, oh, they see this, they're like, yeah. oh, I wasn't expecting that to yeah. be there. And just keep chipping away. I'm not used to cutting this much length off your hair. <laughs> well, it's not usually this long either. It's not. Now we're getting to the point of the head where we're not going to be cutting this way anymore. We're going to be cutting this way because that's where his head starts to change shape. Mm -hmm. We want to be bringing the hair straight up from that head. Like, and it's not straight up to the ceiling like this. It's, you see that point of the head, the, the trajectory of where that would be coming off. That makes sense. And then now you have another guideline for that different direction that you're going to be cutting. And we want to create another section. I'm going to be working towards me, and then I'll go to the other side. So before I move to the back now, I want to cross-check everything that I just did up here. But this looks really fun, and I'm loving this. Um, and I don't use as clean sections here, because I just I kind of do it quickly. Um, and I just kind of want to just pull up the hair. See, you see that little corner there? We want to make sure that those corners are taken care of. And with wavier hair, it's a little easy to get lost. Um, and that's why cross-checking is so important. But that's also why clean sections are so important. All we need to do, and before we blow dry it, is to even up this length and this length here. He also wanted to thin it out a bit here. I'm not going to go crazy with it. Um, but with, when you push all your hair back, and especially leaving it long back here, it's going to bulk up here, because that's where all of the hair is collecting. So it needs to be thinned out a bit. 
And you know, there are some people that are like, don't chop it in with your thinning shears. And yeah, don't chop it in to the point where you're making the hair shorter because you're just going crazy with it. But taking out, uh, you know, using your, your thinning shears the few snips just to get some of the bulk out is totally fine. We want to leave this as long as possible, but we don't want there to be just like a stark difference between this length and this length. So I'm kind of going to go at it at an angle and then grab the other sections and do the same thing. So I'm going to take my thinning shears, texturizing shears, Kind of pull it out and I do I do two cuts with it. I'll go one, move your fingers up farther, two. So you, you know where your scissors are going to be going. You're not just like chopping it in. It's strategic. One, move up, two. One, move up, two. Now I'm gonna use a little bit of salt spray, Beard Brand salt spray. Cool. But I don't wanna to use too much. Um, I wanna use just enough for the texture of his hair to kind of come through. So when he runs his fingers through, you know, you can kind of see that like messy mulletness on top. Um, but, and I don't necessarily wanna put anything in the back here. Um, I want it that to drop and salt um, salt spray will give your hair a lot of volume and we want this to kind of just be laying down I like to kind of pull the hair up a little bit in the front to give it some volume I'm going to take my hands and just kind of move it through and then it'll get more of a natural finish to it. I'm going to end with uh, some cold air. You know, with, with high heat on a blow dryer, you kind of want to end with the cold hair to close the cuticles of the hair so it creates less frizz. This is the shortest we've ever made your hair on top. How do you feel? For real? I think so. You always make me measure it. Could you measure it? Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to know. So let's see, what did we leave it off at last time? We did six and a half. <laughs> Is it way less than six and a half right now? I think so. I would imagine <laughs> so. I cut a lot off. Okay. Right about there. One, two, three, four. We're at four, four? inches. Okay. I think that is the shortest we've gone, though. Yeah. Uh, if we weren't filming, I would have probably specify that around four inches is what I was looking to go for this time around. Wow, I read your mind then, yep. huh? <laughs> All right, um, I'm gonna throw some hair tonic in there just because it's a little, it's a little puffy, but I'm not gonna put much in the top um, because that would kind of counteract the salt spray that I put in there, and I really like what that salt spray did. But I mainly wanna put it back here. I put some in my hair too, because I feel like I look like <laughs> Hermione in Harry Potter 1 and 2 when she looks like she stuck her finger in a light socket. <laughs> okay, all right. And I have my texturizing shears. Just kind of the same thing as like the, the double snip back here. And if you just go crazy with them, you're going you're gonna to do too much. But you see the benefit of leaving the length here because now it blends in with everything and you're able to still push it back. If we were to cut that too short, it'd be his profile, it'd be sticking out too much and it wouldn't go with the top that we cut and it'd be like short, puffy, long, and it just wouldn't have a good shape to it. 